Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. I am here for day eight of my challenge here to see if I can hit rank one mythic and standard. And yeah, this is the big day before the qualifier tournament, uh, qualifier weekend tomorrow that starts tomorrow. So first of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting. I really do appreciate you and you guys are the backbone of the channel. Um, in addition, I do also want to let you know that the deck lists here are going to be in the description as well as a link for the full playlist. So if you want to catch some of the earlier videos or if you want to look at the deck list, it's both on Moxfield and on untapped.gg. And then in addition, um, I do want to give a shout out here again to my first member here, Kibo. Thank you so much here for joining and becoming a member of the channel. It's a great way to support. So thank you so much again. I really do appreciate you. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Um, and then let's go ahead and just uh, let's dive in. So I think that I'm pretty happy with the current build and I haven't made any changes since yesterday. So let's go ahead and dive into some matches. But yeah, this is kind of like the big day before the tournament. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I, you know, I've had a chance to see not only um, aggro matchups, but also some mid range, maybe not a ton of control, but still been able to get like a pretty decent variety of decks. So yeah, hopefully everything will go well tomorrow for uh, day one of the qualifier weekend. Hope you guys have been having a great week so far. Really excited here with Mono White Humans. I think it's a great deck. And just looking forward, I haven't had too much time to look at the new set, but I do think it's going to be a lot of fun and have a lot of things that could potentially even make this deck stronger. So we'll have a look. If any of you guys are going to any of the like uh, late night sealed events here at, for the uh, the pre-release, you know, definitely just go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, I'm not gonna have a chance to go myself, but you know, definitely excited about the new set, and so I think it's gonna be great. And even though this is primarily, um, you know, kind of be sort of like a standard channel where I do like standard as like my pretty much my favorite format. I do also like draft, so coming up here next week, I did just talk to Ace MTG, and we're going to be doing a collab there with his channel. So sometime um, next week or next weekend, should be looking at a collab draft. It'll be our first draft of the new format, so super excited about that. Um, if you haven't checked out his channel, Ace MTG is a really, really great um, YouTube content creator uh, and a good friend, so definitely check out his channel. All right, gonna be on the play. Opening hand looks great. Let's go. Got the nice veteran into Vanguard, hopefully into Adeline if we pick up another land. Looks like we are up against Boros. Okay, there's the land, which is great. Now, since we are against Boros and they have the artifact, I think it is actually worth going Veteran and then holding up March for zero in case they decide to target it with Gleeful Demolition. So a little bit of a heads up play, but I think it's what we want to do here. And we could also consider trading Veteran with Epicure just because they do kind of spiral out of control faster than we do. Admittedly, their Epicure is not great, but like if they have Knight Errant, it's possibly worth trading here. I think let's attack first. But since we've got Adeline, like we'll still have one creature around. I think I'm actually gonna push the damage here. 
just because they want to try to like get a lot of creatures down spiral out of control this might be wrong i'm not sure but just slowing them down even a little bit feels good All right, so no Gleeful Demolition on two. We could hold the, the march. We could also, like, if they plan to, like, untap and use it, maybe it's better to just march it now just to, like, have a clean board. Um, so might want to do that. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and march it now just to be mana efficient here. And since we're not going to have a chance to do it before they untap. We do give them the option here of like getting a card going, but that's fine. I guess we can give them the... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's always cool. If we are up against uh, one of my viewers, it's so it's so much fun to run into people um, who do say hello. I appreciate it, so it's always nice. All right, there's the War Leader's Call. And now let's just get Copper Coat Vanguard going and Warden. Should be pretty game breaking. But yeah, I think it was probably right to use the march there just to ensure that they didn't get, get to go off with uh, demolition. So here, I've kind of gone back and forth on the plan for the board, but I think that bringing in like glass casket basically as much of the removal as i can while also bringing in doorkeeper thrall is probably the way um yeah i think i've wanted to kind of lower the curve a little bit i'm still unsure about cutting brutal cathar or not but i think that since we know they're running War Leader's Call, maybe there's a consideration for keeping in Thalia. I usually cut it since we're bringing in so many spells. So I don't know. I, I think that maybe I'm still going to shave a couple copies here just because, again, we are bringing in a ton of spells. We need to cut something. Can probably shave like one Inspector, probably Brutal Cathars, just again because we are trying to go for the Doorkeeper Thrall play. Maybe cut like a Sentinel. Yeah, and then maybe just like cut another Thalia here. I'm I'm not not certain about this board plan, but I think this gives us kind of a little bit of everything. We've got the Doorkeeper Thrall, Destroy Evil March, Glass Casket. So I, I realize that this is a non-bow, but I think it's still good to have multiple ways of dealing with stuff. In case like we don't draw the Doorkeeper Thrall. Okay, this hand is a little weak. Um, we do have some man lands, which is decent, but I think mostly the reason that I'm gonna keep this here is because we've got March or access to March here. So I think I will keep. So 
the question is now do we want to try to get rid of the warden or do we want to get rid of the the clue token i think we get rid of the clue because it kind of like deals with two birds with one stone Warden certainly could still get out of hand, but I think that at least limiting the the chance that they just go off this turn is helpful. Okay, looks like they've got another inspector, so they have another way to do it. Here I think we just sit. And this hand might have just been too weak. Maybe we should have just mulliganed. But it's like against against Boros, you really do want to have access to March if you can. Most versions of Boros, I think, are probably bringing in some number of Lithomantic Barrage. So they've got that. They've got Case of the Gateway Express as kind of like the two removal options. So, yeah, I don't know about keeping in Brutal Cathari. It would be really good here, obviously, but... Yeah, and we're at a point now where we pretty much just have to throw away our Bunicorn, or excuse me, the, the Vanguard here. I guess we could also like throw away Foundry instead. Yeah, maybe we should have thrown away Foundry there, but I don't think we can take these hits and just have a chance. We're gonna have to draw like amazingly well here to get out of this. Yeah, this might just be it. Okay, that's probably going to do it. Yeah, that's basically just going to do it there. Okay, so... Do we make any changes here? Maybe cut the Thalia. Probably bring in, like, the Lantern Flares... Like, we need pretty much everything, I think, for the removal pieces just to have a chance. Um, we still have 31 creatures, so yeah, we've still got enough creatures to get this going. So maybe we bring in the Lantern Flares, and I think we want... Maybe shave another Sun Gold Sentinel here. Yeah, we've still got a decent number of 1-drops. I think we just kind of run it like this. I don't think that bringing in Brutal Cathars may be the move, just because we do have the Doorkeeper Thrall, and they've got some removal for it. So now we have four March, Glass Casket, Destroy Evil, two Lantern Flares. Hopefully that's enough to get it done. Okay. We have another five lander here, but we do have good stuff to do, so I think I'm gonna keep. And hopefully, like, Inspector lets us draw out of it also. So 
So I think here we threaten having March, even though we haven't got it. So instead of playing Foundry here, as I would normally, I think we just play Planes to threaten like we've got March. Since he's already seen it. At least make him think twice about casting Gleeful Demolition. Yeah, I guess his deck's a bit more explosive. We've got Lantern Flares. Maybe we just leave Inspector back here. I can see kind of going either way. They're attacking there or just sitting back. And again, we're here just representing that we've got March, even though we don't. <laughs> now we do. Yeah, now I guess we just push. And I suppose here they can trade. Like, so he's representing reinforcements, so we'd be trading Foundry for Inspector. But given how explosive the deck is, I think I'm actually okay with that. And since we're, like, flooding out here... Okay, yeah, now I'm just kind of wondering what he's holding. Like, maybe he's just trying to go for, like, Recruiter on 5? I don't really know. I guess he can, like, hold up Bibwhac. But I think, again, we're, we're fine just holding up March here so we can still just push with Foundry. And again, if he wants to trade two one ones here, I'm totally fine with that. So the question is now, do we march the token just to get the free kill? Because um, he could go like, theoretically he could like play an artifact, play demolition and go into night errant, which would be pretty backbreaking. But like it, it kind of hurts just losing our foundry here. It's a good question. Do we go for the, the trade or not? Yeah, I think getting him down to one creature. I do think he's definitely trying to bait out the march. Um.
Like we've got flares, so we have some stuff to do. So I think I think I will go for it. Cuz we have bought some time here with our uh with our march. Hopefully it's good enough. And whiff on Night Aaron, interesting. I guess we're both kind of just flooding out here super big time. So here I think we can just push for Iganjo, and then like if he just wants to try to shove in next turn, we can also use Lantern Flare to get his bivouac if he wants to turn that on. So here we're just trying to bait out the Iganjo. Okay, now I think we want to Lantern Flare the, the Warden. And the question is now, do we still push? I think we we sit back here because he can do some sort of um, fairly easy blocks. And I think we, we want to now just maybe sit a little bit since we don't have enough to both activate and also be Ganjo. He's definitely got all the night errands. Oh my god, he's got all four. Jesus. Okay, this, this game might be getting a little bit out of control. Yeah, now he's got the Imidanes plus the reinforcements here. Yeah, I think here we just, oh man. Trying to decide if it's, I think maybe we have to get rid of the warden, but like he can just attack next turn and kill us or do a whole lot. And he can still scry, so I think we just end up um, maybe doing the lantern flare here.
The reason we're not doing it for four is we still want to hold up Iganjo in case he wants to attack with Knight Errant. But yeah, he's going to be pushing an absurd amount of damage next turn. Yeah, that's gotta be lethal, right? Um, can we survive this? So we have five blockers. We can kill one of the Knight Errants. Actually, let's use Foundry on one of the three twos. So we shoot down one of the Knight Errants, we're taking 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 22. Okay, I think we can maybe let some of these three twos go. I guess we'll take down one of them and then block three of the five fours. And I guess maybe another one of the three twos here. Yeah, we're still basically dead, because even if we play all three of these, yeah, he just swings in. Yeah, that's going to do it, unfortunately. Yeah, four Knight Errants is a bit rough. And maybe that matchup is just, like, so overpowering that maybe we just need to bring in, like, maybe even, like, three copies of the... Uh, Doorkeeper Thrall or even like a full playset if it's that powerful. Um, marches are great, but I think definitely considering the sideboard there could be good. All right, gonna need to mulligan. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. I think we do wanna have access to two, two white sources, so I'll throw back one of the foundries. Hopefully no removal for Copper Coat here. Then we can go into Night Errant, which feels pretty good. Alright, so he had the play with fire, but he decided to hold it. Well, that's good for us. We can pick up some more, another veteran, and probably Sun Gold Sentinel, especially if they're like 
if they have squee possibilities. I mean, Initiate is good potentially for dealing with Kumano, but it's pretty slow. So I think I just go Sun Gold Sentinel here. As the Witch Stalkers. As much as I'd like to hold the Ziganjo, I think we just want to play out as much stuff as possible here. So I think we play it out. And then probably just copper coat here. I guess like Sun Gold Sentinel does play a little better with if they have like Monstrous Rage, we could like block the Kumana, which feels pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Sentinel here actually. They have another Witch Stalkers. Five, eight, nine. I think we just take the damage here because we don't want to lose stuff to Kumanos. <sighs> Definitely not ideal, but... I think we want to gain the extra life from all the veterans. Now they trade better. We can also use Foundry to trade. Um, racing the Phoenix trick is a real thing. So what do we want to hold back? I think we hold back Foundry and probably at least one veteran. Looks like they drew something. Okay, but only Phoenix Chick. That's not too bad. I think we just trade Foundry here. Even though, like, we could have a 4-4 potentially, we still just want to trade for Codebreaker. Just keep our veterans going as long as possible. Question is now do we trade veteran? I think we kind of have to because like we're racing down this clock. If we just like sit here and take it, it's not great. I could see full sending here actually. Like even if they trade here with our copper coat, um, we're still pushing for dropping them to nine. Then we have like. A decent amount left over we can still use like foundry i think we just full send
Okay, so we can swing in for seven. They're pushing six here, we drop to five. If we draw a creature, we can go up to seven and then take another full hit from them and not die. This is close. Otherwise we just trade a Sentinel, but then we take an extra point from the, the Wicked token. They push five, we drop to six. We're only attacking back for four. I think we actually just take the damage here. It's gonna be close. I just hope we draw a creature. Okay, that was perfect. So now we've got a blocker, can get out of range. We can push with Foundry. And threaten potential lethal on the following turn. Let's see, we swing for seven, they drop to two. What could they draw here? If they draw like lightning, Lightning Strike, we, we block here. Yeah, Lightning Strike would kill us. There's no getting around that, though. I think we give ourselves the best chance of just getting there. Hopefully no monstrous rage here. Because yeah, play with fire doesn't do it. They need either like monstrous rage. I think actually only monstrous rage would get them there. Yep, nice. All right, so bringing in Lantern Flare. What else? Surge of Salvation. Probably March. And what do we want to cut? Brutal Cathar is less good here. Um, I like our two drops. I think we probably cut Initiate. That gets us down to 60. Hmm. Kutzel's Flanker also gains life, but like Night Errant just kind of seems a little better. I don't know. Or just having, I really like March also. Like March just seems really good. I think maybe we Yeah, I guess I'm just going to sit with this here since we've got like the Thalias. I do like at least two marches. Maybe we should bring in the full play set. I'm not sure. I like Sun Gold Sentinel. Being able to attack the graveyard feels pretty good. Um, yeah, we need to mulligan here. Whew. Certainly don't love going down to five. Um, yuck. I really want to keep this hand. Because, like, if we can draw a second land, like, if we, I guess we can go, like, Novice Inspector into Warden. Scry to get the land, but like if we miss, it's so bad. The veteran is like what's tempting me to stay here with six. Oh. <sighs> yeah, 
I think we we need to mulligan. If it wasn't mono red. But this is a pretty weak five card hand. Maybe we should have stayed at six. Ah, it's hard to know. Okay, that was a nice pickup. I mean, this is still going to be super rough, but now we can go Veteran plus Inspector. I guess we can try to trade for Swift Spear. Let's see, we're taking two, four, six, drop to two. We're probably just dead. I suppose knowing that we were gonna draw that, if we had, yeah, maybe if we went down to one, then we could have like played that lantern flare. All right, so we can lantern flare the phoenix chick, go up to four. It's just not enough. Yeah, that's definitely gonna be it. We want to bring in the extra marches. We've got two lantern flares, surge, two marches. I kind of want the extra marches here, honestly. And then maybe cut like one knight errant, one inspector. Maybe like a sun gold sentinel, actually. Okay, this hand looks better. Yeah, going down to five there was just backbreaking. Okay, so far so good.
think I really just want to get Adeline going here. I mean, Night Aaron is really good too. But Adeline just feels so powerful here. Alright, so we'll scry away the land. And mostly we're doing that just to gain the life off the attack. I think here if they attack with everything, we just don't block. We could Knight Errant for three here. Um, I kind of want to attack first and get Warden into the air. That's the only issue. Because if we if we Knight Errant for three, we won't have enough to get Warden to three. I suppose we could tap out Adeline, but I don't want to do that. So I think we just get Warden going here. And now we still have the chance to Knight Errant for three post-combat if they don't block here. Gotta be lights out. Codebreaker is not going to do it. Yep. All right, thanks guys for watching. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at the stats. Okay, so we are currently 72% win rate, 28 wins and 11 losses. So overall, really happy with Mono Red. We're eight and two, um, five and two against Boros, even though that did have a loss there today. But I think, yeah, still just making a couple changes to the board perhaps. Um, I haven't seen Doorkeeper Thrall in action, and I feel like it's going to be pretty powerful. So maybe upping it to like a, th a three count or possibly a play set in the, in the sideboard could be something. Um, other than that, the rest of the matchups, I feel like I've at least seen a little bit. So just knowing kind of like Doorkeeper Thrall is going to be good against like the Jund matchup or the... Um, you know, any of like the Discover decks or the other combo decks uh, good against Domain, which we had a problem with, that should help too as well. So thanks guys again for watching. You guys are awesome and we will see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.